Rub up your engines! Rando Rule says, 17,000 bucks for an FJ Cruiser, 2,806,000 miles. Good deal, any issues in the future? Okay, they are becoming collector's items. Now, 106,000 miles, 17 grand is a lot of money for a car that is 14 years old, but that's what they go for. And they are collector's items. They're never probably gonna ever make them again because they get bad gas mileage. Makes Toyota's gas mileage lower, so they get fined by the government, so they'll probably never make them again. But here's one thing, before you put one penny, those will rust like no tomorrow if you live like in Boston, Detroit, Alaska. When they put salt on the road, it eats those things up. So check for rust. You go underneath, it's all rusted, do not buy it. I've had people buy them, I went under and I just said, man, I feel like crying for you because you paid a lot of money for this thing and everything's rusting away, you got ripped off. So check underneath for actual rust. If it's rusted, do not buy it. If it's clean, like it's from Florida, Arizona, Texas, go ahead. They are collector's items, but if they're rusted, they're going to fall apart in front of your very eyes. They're never going to be worth anything. Once the frame and everything rusts on them, they're worth absolutely nothing. Dr. Bad PhD. That's a good one. Are new Honda CVTs reliable? I'm buying a new Accord. Yes, they are. Realize Honda, just like Toyota, make their own CVTs and they design them. They get phenomenal gas mods, but still have pretty good acceleration. I have yet to see any late model ones break. They know what they're doing. This is the thing about the Japanese. They don't just build something and that doesn't work. Oh, we'll throw that away. We'll make something else. They just keep perfecting. Look at the original Honda. It had a two-cylinder 592cc motorcycle engine, a little bitty car. Then a couple years later, they made the Civics. Now look, they make race cars. They keep perfecting their stuff. Anime and Fish says, Scotty, what do you think of a Toyota GR86? Okay, realize it's not a Toyota, it's Subaru. Subaru makes it. Cool little cars, realize you're getting a boxer engine, a four-cylinder boxer engine with two cylinders on each side, like an old Volkswagen. You're not getting a Toyota design, they're only built by Subaru. It's a Subaru vehicle. A lot of guys like driving around, they have fun. If you like a car like that, they can last quite some time. Just realize it is not a Toyota, it's a Subaru. They're made in Subaru factories. Jim Marcusi says, Scotty, what do you think about using AT? 205 resale and engines of turbocharger leak from the turbo oil seals. It's worth trying. They have engine oil in them. The seals get dirty. They can start leaking. It fixes the seals. Now, if it doesn't, forget it. You'd have to replace them. It's going to cost you a small fortune. The stuff does work on seals. It's made just for rubber seals. Somehow, it's a polymer and it rejuvenates the rubber. I've been using it for decades and I'm amazed at how the stuff can work. If that doesn't work, I've never found anything else that would work. You'd have to physically rebuild it. Rebuilding a turbocharger is not a cheap deal to do. Best laptop PSN. Scotty, I got a 98 Jeep Wrangler manual. I need to drain the fuel. What's the best way? Okay, well, you're going to wish you had a Japanese car because the Toyotas, Hondas, their gas tanks have drain plugs. Take them off, drain it, put it back on. Well, the Americans stopped doing that a long time ago. The way you're supposed to, you're supposed to take it all apart, take the tank off, turn it upside down. But if you want, take the fuel line off, on the bottom somewhere and get a pump and suck it out and pump it into a container. You can do it that way because otherwise you got to pull the whole tank off. They don't have any kind of drains. You know, they're swines. They don't want to make anything easy. Like automatic transmissions used to have drain pan and a bolt, right? Well, the Americans got rid of the bolt decades ago, so you had to take the whole stupid thing off instead of just pulling the drain plug. Well, same thing with their gas tanks, but you can pump it out. Reg says, Scotty, the NX300 requires premium, but it's okay to put in regular gas. Sure, you want to save money. It's a buck something gallon more for the premium, right? Now, if you run on regular instead of premium, you'll lose some horsepower, but it should run perfectly fine. The computers can compensate for it. Just like if you ever seen one of those flex fuels, it says on the back flex fuel, it can run on anything from regular gasoline to E85, which is 85% ethanol and 15% gasoline and everything in between. So say one tank you put in regular gas, the next you put in the E85, but then of course it already got regular gas in. So the computers and the cars can measure the amount of alcohol in the fuel and compensate. And the same thing with yours. It won't run quite as fast, but it's not going to hurt anything. Bob says, I got an 03 Civic. My headlights are intermittently pulsing while the car's in motion. People say my battery's fine. What do you think if they're pulsing on and off? There's really only three things you can do that. If your battery's bad or your alternator, it can do that. You can test them. Anybody can test them. Any mechanic, you can buy equipment to test them yourself for about 50 bucks on Amazon these days. If not that, 
then you would have a wiring problem. Maybe the ground wire to the headlights is weak or the power line to the headlights is weak or check the headlight bulbs, pull them up. Maybe the socket is corroded. Could be that too. I mean, you can get all kinds of reasons, but normally it's either the battery or the alternator and it can be easily tested. Just like, let's say your ground wire on your battery isn't working right. You just have to take it off, clean it all off, tighten it up and then tighten it on the engine and on the frame where the ground wire goes. And a lot of times it'll fix it. Russell Muscle says, Scotty, what's the debate about dielectric grease? Okay, well, here's the odd thing about dielectric grease. Dielectric grease is not electrically conductive, right? It keeps things from shorting out. It gets rid of water, too. So guys will put it on bulbs and stuff and then screw them in. So if water intrudes, it won't make them rust and corrode. But you might say, but Scotty, you just said dielectric grease doesn't conduct electricity. Well, it doesn't. But you put it on a bulb, when you tighten the bulb in the socket, that wipes the grease off the connecting points and then it works. So that's how that stuff works. When you plug something in, the plug's supposed to be tight and the tightness will push the grease off of the contact point and then it'll be around it so water can't intrude and you won't get any corrosion. A lot of guys that have trailers do that because they're trailing a trailer with a boat and they're putting it in the water when they back up and it will work. Just realize that it isn't conductive of electricity, but it seals it. And when you plug a tight thing on, just the tightness of the contacts pushes the grease off of that particular part and then it works. That's why people get confused. They think, well, it doesn't conduct electricity. Well, if it did conduct electricity, just think if you put it on a socket and screwed it in, it would short the whole thing up because positive and negative would be connected by the grease. So now you know the truth. Austin says, I disconnected my car's heater cord. Does this cause any problems? I'm assuming you did because the stupid thing's leaking, right? Here's how you disconnect them correctly and you won't have any problems. You got two heater hoses going in to the firewall. One's in, one out, right? You can disconnect them. But all you got to do is buy a hose connector, a plastic one, and screw those two ends together and then tighten them so the water still flows. Because in many cars, the water going through the heater core still is part of your cooling system and it has to flow. So if you just plug the two hoses, you're not getting the flow and then you might have a problem with the head overheating because it wouldn't get the correct flow. So all you do is take the two hoses off from the heater and then get a splice kit and splice it together with a little connector and then it flows and then the only thing that happens is you don't have hot air anymore going in the car. But you got to connect them. Don't just plug the two up. That can cause problems. Tracy Dixon says, Scotty, I got an 09 Honda Accord four banger with 190,000. It's a VTC rattle at startup. Should I fix it? Well, it depends. The fix is going to cost you a lot of money. You got to take it apart. Probably going to have to change the camshaft assembly on a variable timing. The timing chain could cost a fortune. If it only rattles on startup, I've had people drive those cars years that way. Keep changing the oil regularly. What the heck? Because it's going to cost you probably anywhere from one to three thousand to fix it correctly. And if it runs okay otherwise, eh. What the heck? You might try that ATS oil cleaner that I find. The guy's in Albuquerque, ATS. So you pour it in your engine oil, rev it to 2,000 RPM, 15, 20 minutes, then change the oil filter. And if the timing chain tensioner is stuck because it's carboned up, that can clean it. And then it's tight and it stops rattling. I've seen that fix it. But if that doesn't fix it and you don't want to spend that money, a lot of times they can still run quite some time. Stackbor 113 says, Scotty, what do you think of the Toyota Land Cruiser? Well, they're great giant vehicles that can last virtually forever. But of course, they are tree Mendes gas hogs. I asked my customers with them, what kind of gas mileage you get? And they said, I don't want to know. I just fill it up all the time. I don't want to know how low it is. The original ones had a six cylinder engine. They had pistons like giant coffee cans, huge things. Some of those things in town would get like six miles a gallon. The newer ones got somewhat better because they're fuel injected, higher level of technology, but they're still tremendous gas hogs because they are gigantic vehicles. They weigh a lot. They're high up in the air. They're not aerodynamic. So they are tremendous gas hogs, but they can last an awful long time. DJ Tonesco says, I have my noisy fan every eight seconds when I'm in park with the engine running. All right. Or if you're talking about your cooling fans, if they keep going on and off every eight seconds, you got something wrong with your cooling fan system. Like easily could be the switch. The thermal switch tells the radiator fans what the temperature is. And when it reaches a certain temperature, it turns the fan on. Then when it cools down, it turns it off. But if it keeps going on and off every eight seconds, you probably need a new switch. The switch is probably breaking down. Check that first. That's the most common thing. If not that, it could be a bad cooling fan relay too. That will also do the same thing. Nitro Blue says, Scotty, I got 2011 Nissan Juke, 78,000 miles with the CVT. I never changed the tranny fluid. Should I? Yes, definitely. If I were you, I'd change it every 30, 40,000 miles. Those are weak transmission 
situations, do not tempt fate. Change it. Watch my videos on how to do it. You can do it yourself. You drain out whatever comes out. You pump that same amount back in with new fluid. Do not leave it alone. Because if you don't change it, it's going to wear out faster. And those are weak Jetco CVT transmissions to begin with. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.